Closed captioning for Lakeland Currents is supported by the Minnesota Department of Commerce, Telecommunications, Access Minnesota, and Nisswa Tax Service. Nisswa Tax Service, tax preparation for businesses and individuals. Across from City Hall in Nisswa and online at nisswatax.com. Hi, and welcome to Lakeland Currents here on Lakeland Public Television. I'm Dan Hegstead. I'm substituting for Ray Gildow for the next couple of shows. Today on Lakeland Currents, we are going to be talking about the High Altitude Balloon Project at Forest View Middle School here in Baxter. And guests are, to my immediate right, is Jim Reed, who teaches 7th grade multimedia. To his right is Corey Olson, who teaches 7th grade technology and engineering education. And at the end of the couch with the cool shoes is Grace Pagel, who is an 8th grader and part of the High Altitude Balloon Program at Forest View. We're going to start out with a news segment that our Becky Parker did in uh, March of 2012. And uh, so let's take a look at that. It'll give you a good intro to what, uh, what the program's about. Months of hard work paid off for Forest View Middle School students in Brainerd when their launch of a high altitude balloon was successful. Becky Parker tells us how high their balloon sailed in this week's Community Spotlight. They worked for months engineering a project to launch a high altitude balloon and payload into the stratosphere. Thirteen Forest View Middle School students met after school using mathematics and science to design their own payload. Everything went so great. We, I mean, one day a week was not good for us anymore. We, had, we were meeting Monday, Wednesday, Friday, sometimes Thursdays, <coughs> fitting every day we could possibly meet in there. And we just had so much to do. They hoped to send it up with a balloon and parachute 85,000 feet above the earth, taking pictures along the way. Creating their own payload was a daunting task for such young students. What is significant about our club is that no one, as we know, and we've done our research, and everyone we've talked to says nobody has attempted to do this from scratch like you guys have with this young of students. Launch day brought out nerves, excitement, and many bystanders hoping to see the balloon lift off. Forest View teacher Corey Olson told the students ahead of time that real engineers fail all the time, so he'd be equally as proud of them if the balloon didn't even get off the ground. But fortunately, that's not how things turned out. Two, one, launch! Everything went according to their plans and calculations. Feelings of relief and accomplishment were written on the students' faces. You can see how they were relieved, excited, handshakes, high fives, amazing, amazing. I mean, you could feel the weight lift off of them because we've been working so hard. So excited that we could see it successfully go up, and we are just hoping that it stays in the air more than an hour because that means it did not reach the altitude that we were expecting. Using laptops, smartphones, and iPads, they tracked their progress through a GPS within the payload. Best case scenario would be that we recover the payload, we get everything back, and it's successful. I mean, already it's successful, and then hopefully next year we do it again, which I'm pretty sure we will. The balloon rose to more than 104,000 feet and landed in a rural area south of Danbury, Wisconsin. However, the camera failed at 27,000 feet, so they did not get the space photos they had hoped for. They did recover some photos taken from above the clouds, and overall, the project was a success. I'm so glad that we decided to take 7th and 8th grade students to do this because they're so creative. They can come up with these things. They are not scared to make mistakes. Next year, they plan to try it all over again, this time using a video camera. For this week's Community Spotlight, Becky Parker, Lakeland News. Wow, what a neat project for, for middle school students. Very impressive. Al Dory from the Brainerd Amateur Radio Club helped the students and used his call sign to track the balloon. So that was uh, March 26th of 2012. To get you up to date, here's a story that our Hannah Tran did for Lakeland News on February 6th of 2013. Inside right there, this box referred to as a payload, looks similar to the one Travis Jensen made last year. Well, last year with our payload, we had um, this one right here. So you have a hole here for your GoPro. Three times last year, a 600-gram helium balloon traveled above and beyond, where blue skies turn into a blanket of infinite mysteries. 
The payload that will fly in March will be a 1,200 gram helium balloon, which will be twice that size. The second year of Forest View Middle School's high altitude balloon project requires a bigger balloon. We have the 1,200 gram balloon tagged with one long string parachute, and these are biological payloads. Instead of just one payload, there will be more. We're going to have the four payloads this time with different classrooms. Students will design their own experiments in each payload, which will carry more than just cameras and location devices. Where this launch will be a stacked payload, where there will be one will be a fifth grade scientific payload that will carry plants that the kids are currently growing in the accelerated science classroom and the kids want to see how the plants are affected by radiation. A more complex collection of data for scientific experiments makes this year's launch unique. This is what we're putting up this time. We have some kind of like a weather calculator. Jensen's payload is similar to last year's, but with additions to not only reach the beyond, but understand it. Hannah Tran, Lakeland News. Pretty cool stuff, isn't it? And I love the pictures uh, from the edge of space, and it's... Uh... It's amazing what uh, what you're doing. For those of you at home that are sitting there with your iPads and uh, tablets, we know you like to follow along. Check out the website hab.forestviewmultimedia.com. hab.forestviewmultimedia.com, and you can check out your website. Well, gentlemen and lady, this is quite a project. That's really interesting. Everybody who's seen these pieces goes, wow. It's amazing what you're doing. It's amazing you're doing it in a middle school, too. So a lot of questions to get at in a short period of time. Tell us uh, first, wh why did you choose a high-altitude balloon over other projects? Let's do that first. You want me to take that one? Yeah, go, go ahead. ahead. Okay. Go ahead do that. Um, well, Jim and I got together um, just to do a quick little brief on our two careers. He teaches multimedia 7th grade. I teach technology and engineering 7th grade. And we have a little flexibility in our schedule of some of the curriculum that we can choose to use. And we looked at each other, and he has the skills with the multimedia side, video editing and the computer technologies, and I have the engineering background. And we got together one summer, and we said, we should come up with a, a neat after-school program slash club that we could take kids and, you know, that want to go the extra step further and you know, explore engineering techniques and some of the multimedia tricks that are out there. And so we started doing a little bit of research and we found a lot of different projects, but we really wanted to think outside the box. What could we really challenge kids with? And we found a website that there's some colleges that are doing high altitude ballooning. And the science, technology, engineering, and math behind that um, was a huge focus for us, and we said, well, there's, this is great. So we did a little more research and got a little bit deeper into it. We had no idea what we were getting ourselves into, <laughs> you know, with the level of science and technology and math and engineering behind it. But we knew that teaching seventh grade and in the middle school atmosphere, that if we give these kids an opportunity, they can do it. And we sat down in months of planning, Jim and I both, um, going to our principal built in the building to see if this was all going to be okay and and then we ended up making the application process for kids to take the applications home and they write up why they'd like to be in this club reasons how they would help it and then we sat down and numbered all the applications and and we chose the applicants by number is basically how it was and we yeah. In the first club, we took, what, 13 kids because we thought maybe 13 yeah. would be our lucky number. Yeah. yeah. You know, so we kind of had a weird kind of way we did that. but And that was last year. Yep. That was last year. And this group, year right. you have how many? This year we have 20. 20. Wow. 20 students, 20, yeah. um, seven female students out of the bunch. And, you know, that's you know a really big reason. Grace is an amazing individual and how much she's helped us already with her social skills and, and her problem-solving skills. At that, but the reason I mean, the number one reason we wanted to get this club going is it's something that is not being done at this level. Right. I mean, independently, and we wanted to challenge our students and everyone that we talked to. How do you get seventh and eighth grade students to do such a feat? I said, they do it. We don't yeah. make them do it. That was one of the questions people had for me to ask you is how much of the work do the students do as opposed to the If I was going adults. to put a percentage, Jim and I do the upfront pl planning. So basically we need to know the majority of the answers that need to be answered 
You know, we try to stay what week, two weeks ahead. Some, of them? Well, the like last year, we <laughs> yeah, tried we to day. stay fifteen minutes <laughs> yeah. ahead of them. Yeah. You know, because there was so much research that we had to do to make sure that we were, you know, not setting our students up for failure. Right. And just to stay ahead of them. But other than that, everything that you see in the front of this table here, and everything that the the club has produced since we started it, is is the students. They created it. They problem solved. They we give them the problem. They go, okay, what can we do? They get into little engineering groups and they try to figure it out. Yeah. What's really been nice about too is there's a a pretty tight knit group of people that do it around the nation, and we've been able to stay in touch with some of them. You know, so when we encounter a problem or we foresee a problem coming up, you know, we could just pop out an email, and the internet's a wonderful thing for that problem solving piece, and we could get the answer to it relatively quickly. And then we'd have to kind of suit the answer to meet our needs because our needs would be a little different because our kids were so much younger, and sometimes the responses we'd be getting back would be pretty technical responses, and we'd have to break them down and say, "Kids are not going to understand it like that." You know, how can we break it down in a way that they can understand it? And once they see the things laid out in front of them and they see the problem, they problem solve because they're not afraid of failure. Mm -hmm. you know, they like they to try things. Yeah, they, don't have a, they don't have that fear of failure and, and not knowing what mm -hmm. to do next. That's a good lesson. Yeah. So are you, apparently you are the, the only group that is this young in the country that's doing something well, like this? Or have you I, don't, I, don't, I don't think that's necessarily true. I don't true. want to be the one that says that. Yeah, there's yeah. other groups doing it. Um, there's a lot of groups that are doing it at the school level, but they're university-led. Yeah, you know, so okay. there might be someone coming in from the university that's got an aerospace engineering background, and they may be bringing some skills to the table that him and I wouldn't have, mm -hmm. you know, and they bring those skills and they apply that in the classroom and they get kids involved in the STEM aspect like that. Sure. So there's a lot of that going on. Um, I know there's some companies in Canada that do it. I've been in contact with a gentleman who does it out of Ontario with his classroom, kind of like okay. the same deal we're doing. Okay. But so to be clear, neither one of you had a background in ballooning or oh, none, anything. This is new, new for you, too. We just have so. an interest in doing Playing. really cool, yeah. high-technology things, you know, yeah. with our background that we have. Okay. Tell me a little about some of the equipment you've got here on the table. We've we've seen this in the video pieces. This yeah. Is, uh, that was our payload. We flew, that was our payload. We flew this. That this got flown twice last year. Yep. And then we flew a smaller version of that the first time. Mm -hmm. um, we fly a... Um, two of these, these are just Canon cameras, and these are actually hacked, meaning the camera runs off uh, the camera runs off an SD card, but we've hacked the SD card, so the camera actually runs off the SD card and not the internal settings inside, okay. the software inside, so that gives us some that gives us the ability to program it to kind of do what we want it to do. So one of the unique features about the hack is we can tell it to take pictures every five seconds, every 15 seconds, and it'll just take pictures until the batteries are dead. And that mm -hmm. sits and in yeah, here. And in in there. And there's two of them. There's two holes that the okay. cameras face in and out of, and they just, um, they're just they just back to each other so they can't get jostled around inside the payload. Mm -hmm. okay. And our, another addition that we put in on our last launch was a GoPro camera. Uh, the GoPro is giving us giving us unbelievable video at HD. And why is a GoPro camera different from the Canon? This GoPro camera, if you see this is in a case, this is indestructible nearly. Yeah. This can be underwater. This I could probably take this and pretty much smash this to the yeah. floor. It's They're durable. Tough. They're tough. They take HD video. I mean, if you I mean, go on Go, GoPro's website. They have them. Mm -hmm. They're using them for all kinds of different purposes. Yeah. Um, and what's nice about it is, like I said, it's sealed, and it provides its own heat. It provides its own, its own heat. heat. Yeah. So now that takes warm. a lot of power, though, doesn't um, it? Yeah. But this, the ones that we've purchased, we've purchased um, a second battery that piggybacks on the primary battery. So, so you can hook run. up two batteries yeah, to it. Yeah. This one has that. It has the ability to have two batteries running, and okay. this one also has the ability to be its own Wi-Fi hotspot. So when this one's turned on, you can pack it in the payload, and then it will um, send out its video via a Wi-Fi signal that you can log into using your cellular phone, like an iPhone or an iPad, and you can actually see what the camera sees before you fly it. And it will, obviously, it'll only work for a little ways. It'd be cool if you'd be able to get it from 100,000 right, feet. Right. But it'll mm -hmm. work when they, if you're in line of sight of it. So it's kind of nice because when you get it packed, if you see something that's not quite right, you can uh, modify the settings on your phone okay. and then have the settings just set to the... GoPro and you don't have to physically touch it to change the settings on it. And one of the reasons you needed heat is because it gets chilly up there. Yeah, this it gets what, 60 below -ish. And you've got a weather device here too? You want to talk about the hobo? Yeah, we have a we have a hobo unit. Well, we have a hobo unit right here. And, and this hobo has, must be an acronym for something. I uh, yeah, it's called, a, it's a data logger. Hobo is okay. just a brand name. Okay. Company that makes it. And this particular unit has um, a external temperature. It also has internal temperature. It's got relative humidity. And this next this year will this will run outside of the payload, and this will log the external temperature every 10 seconds. 
But what's unique about it is then it stores the events in its own flash drive, and then it, you hook it up to a PC, and then you can pull the data off, and then you can dump the data into Excel, and then you can make three-dimensional charts graph. that show you exactly <clears throat> what the temperature was at various elevations because it's time-stamped. Okay. And then that leads to his tracker that he's got in his hand. This is our tracking device. This is how we find our payload. So this uses a ham's radio signal, and we can set this and program this to ping, and obviously it has a GPS code. Um, puck as well. This, can, this pings, which means it sends us a signal back. We can set it for 90 seconds, we can set it for the time frames, whatever <coughs> we'd like. And what that does, it sends back a package, and we can track that package via mobile devices. So we can have our iPads in the chase vehicles okay. when we go to chase our. So literally, what we can do with this is it tells us altitude, it tells us direction of travel, and it tells us the speed at which it's traveling. Mm -hmm during that time when it time stamps it, when it pings back to us. So literally, if we can keep up with our vehicles, we can stay underneath this thing as okay. we travel using the APRS okay. website. And you told me this is hand-built by... This is this was designed by a, a gentleman out of North Carolina. Yeah, Jason Roush. He works man. for NASA. He's a rocket electronic oh. engineer. Right. So yeah. any rocket that goes up into the space station, anything sent up... He works on the electronics, which is yeah, pretty. That's, that's a hobby for him. Interesting connection, okay. and the kids actually just to brief off a little bit got to do a Skype conversation yeah. online last year with him, and that was just that was pretty neat. He was telling the kids in home. He kind of looked like a rocket engineer. Right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, he did kind of look like a rocket <laughs> he was, engineer. He so was, was a pretty neat. interesting, very intelligent so gentleman. It is rocket science in there. It yeah, is. and that is. And yeah. then this is our this is our secondary tracker. This is one of the little devices that saved us many times. Um, this comes out of California, a company called Pocket Finder. And what it does is it uses cellular towers and it uses all three networks, so AT&T, okay. Verizon, all of them. And what it does is it goes online as soon as it connects to the cellular network, and then it works to about two, 3,000 feet. And then basically once it gets out of cellular range, it puts itself to sleep, and then it flies. And then when it comes back to ground and it locks back into the oh. cellular tower, it basically it will physically call you on your phone and tell you, here I am. And it'll overlay its location on Google Maps, and it will show you exactly where it is, and it's within oh, feet. feet. Yeah, and then you just basically walk to it using your phone. It'll show you where it is, and it'll show you where you are, and then it'll show you how to get to it with a map. Okay. So that's <laughs> These were donated. System. These were donated out of California from a company called Pocket Finder. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then we've got a parachute here. We'll just leave that wrapped yep, up. Yeah, parachute. <laughs> yeah, that's just a parachute for the trip back home. And there's one other device over there. What's this is that? our accelerometer. This is new for this year. The accelerometer is going to, the number one thing that we're going to try to get out of the accelerometer, well, it'll give us XYZ rotation, so that we can, it'll plot that and we can hook that up to our program on our computers to yeah. see the rotation of our payload. But what we really want to see is how, fa or how fast is it falling after the initial balloon burst okay. at, the bur at the altitude. Um, because that speed is basically unknown. You can calculate, yes. we've tried to calculate that speed, but you can get within, you know, a few miles per hour, but it, this will actually log that okay. speed. So and we know and what do you calculate it to be? Uh, we calculated last time it was over 220 miles an hour on free fall. Wow. But you have to remember something. At that altitude, there's absolutely nothing yeah. in the atmosphere to slow okay. things so down. So it'll, it'll slow down once it gets in. Once it gets down, right around, it's usually right around the 53,000 yeah. or so. And it seems like, because you can see it on our Google map charts, that you can see the track in three-dimensional image where the parachute, you can tell, opened. It goes from free fall and it starts to glide okay. off usually to an easterly direction right. through the wind currents. So that'll tell us kind of exactly how fast that's, the speed of falling is. Wow. Yeah. So ex extremely high-tech equipment Okay. that's going inside. So. Oh, there's so many questions to ask about this. Now you've got the ham radio club involved, too. Correct. Yep. And Mr. they Alvary. are helping you track this, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, they are okay. our on-the-ground eyes. Yep. They call us on ham radio and tell us, because sometimes we lose that connection because okay. of cellular connectivity, we'll lose that. And they don't lose that because they stay here in town and call from their ham radio basements, you know, because they're okay. all full of that stuff. Yep. And uh, they just relay back to us the information that the primary tracker is sending back. If we lose that and we don't see that one, okay. that ping. Okay. All right. Are there other folks from the community involved? And to um, Sergeant Dave Tim, Sergeant the Dave Tim, Police Department. He ah, tracks yeah. with us, yeah. and he's a ham radio he's a ham licensed yeah. okay. um, individual too. And he usually drives, 
his That's vehicle good. is set up. Yeah. Yeah. Nice so time he drives. Up there, right? um, Chris Hansen, our science teacher. Yeah. At he drove. Or he drives. He's a big part of it. Um, his his child is also, his daughter's in the club. So there's some there's a lot of people out there that have been yeah supporting us and okay I don't want to forget anybody but thanks to everybody I mean all right all right well now what what's the the purpose of this I mean if you you put all this stuff together you're a success if what happens lift off if if it height if, if we distance. get it if we get it back yeah if we, get it back, we get all our equipment back that's a success we're happy. okay and then on top of that obviously the scientific data inside. And our goal is to get as high as we possibly can. Okay. Because as you climb through the atmosphere, the scientific data changes ozone, carbon dioxide levels. And you're, are you able to measure that? We are. Do, we don't have a We're carbon dioxide level. Our big, our, our fun little piece is this hobo device this year, okay. because you have the capabilities yeah. um, of hooking up. We have a um, solar panel in there that will give us an idea of radiation levels. Okay. And we can take those radiation levels and directly correspond as far as altitude, um, what those are. So that's okay. going to be kind of neat to see that on a graph when okay. we get back. Yeah. Now, one of our one of one of our really big goals was too is to get kids like this involved in STEM. Right. Our that's goal was to get her interested in STEM and get the other 19 kids interested in STEM, the science, technology, engineering, and maybe steer some kids down that path. Yep. Maybe have a project where they'll latch onto it and they'll say, "I want to do that someday." You know, mm -hmm. there's so many pieces. That maybe they'll latch on to one of the pieces, and that's the pursue or the right yeah. the path they'll go down. So, Grace, what what have you learned, and what will you do with what you've learned? Well, what I've learned is definitely one of the big things is I think teamwork and communication with the other group members in our in our project because um, when we split up into our groups and make our different payloads, we all have to take ideas from everybody to see what we can do to make our payload the best that it can be, so it can make our goals. Okay. Now, what exactly have you done for the project? What, what's been your, your role? Well, what we've done is before we started out, like at the beginning of the year, we started out learning about re like researching the altitudes of the different atmosphere levels and also about the different temperatures and what may affect our payload as we go higher and higher. And also then after that we learned soldering too, which would help with our okay. trackers. And then we also learned how to um, clear up the data and find out from that tractor, tracker what they send back of all the information. And then right now we've been working on making our payload designs. And the thing that's different this year is we're going to have four payloads hooked up to one 1,200 gram balloon. Is that four of these then? Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. And we have a couple of different science classes that are at Forest View involved. So they're going to be sending up some critters like little mealworms and some plants to see what like the radiation does to it. Okay, so these will be open to the to the no. air? Or? No, they won't be open to it, okay. but we're just gonna see like what happens to them at certain okay. altitudes Okay. because of differences in air pressure and radiation. Okay. How far do you expect, expect it to go now? You went to Danbury, Wisconsin with one. Yeah. One made it just over Mille Lacs, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one came down just south of McGregor. Yeah. One came okay. down just south of Clear Lake. Clear Lake, yeah. Down. Nice and we don't know where this one will go. Okay. We're hoping to get 125,000, 130,000 feet. Okay. Our highest is 104,685. Okay. So we're hoping to get 125,000 feet because we really want that. We really want that beautiful picture of the curve. Yeah. That's what I want. And I want that beautiful <laughs> picture of the curvature of the Earth. And I want the scientific piece. data. You know. So. Yeah. And and at that height, the winds generally move west to east. Is yeah. that correct? Traditionally, yeah. okay. absolutely. So you could end up in. Ohio. Well, wow. we have a, a a prediction website that we use, and we can we use it usually three three days before launch. We have the kids go on there a couple times a day, and okay. what the prediction website does for us is it gives us a rough idea ah. where, if we type in all the the parameters of our payload and the amount of helium we're using and so forth, we can get close. It gives us a path, but so far it has not been that accurate. Okay. But it will close. Give us yeah, it gives us close. So yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. You don't I mean, want to end up in Lake Michigan. Any no, no, yeah, no. and then we can pull the pin on the. Yeah, the, <laughs> then we lose all our stuff. Yep. We've just got a few minutes left, uh, and I've got so many questions. But uh, now, it, it, the cost of all this. I know a GoPro isn't cheap because I want one. And yeah, I, and I don't have one. Uh, where the funding comes from? Where? 
Yeah. Well, we've had our, our principal, John Anderson, has been extremely supportive. He's been wonderful. He uh, hasn't limited us. Um, he's been very open to our requests. Um, and we've asked various groups within town okay. to some money, and we've got funding that way. We've got funding through the um, Brainerd Alumni Foundation. They've been really okay. generous. And um, so groups like that have stepped up to help us out. And if folks want to contribute, they should go to your website? They can go to our website, or they me? could just contact us through Forestry Middle School. Okay. Um, anything that went to Forestry Middle School would obviously come back to him and I. Okay. So they could go that route, absolutely. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, what? Uh, uh, talk about, in the minute we've got left, talk about the Samsung uh, program that you've got. You well, can get a chunk of $100,000? Yeah, yeah, well, we've already won 40000 Oh. And we're current. That's forty thousand dollars worth of Samsung technology for our district. For our building, okay. our district. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And we're currently in the running. Out of four, there's fifteen schools, and five of those fifteen schools are going to win about seventy thousand more for a total okay. of one hundred and ten thousand dollars. So folks need to go online and so, vote for it. Yes, you. they can go online and vote. And they can go to our website, and there's okay. a link right off our website, or they can go to Forest View Middle School's website okay. and vote and click on the link there to get to the page okay. that they vote. And vote it's, for uh, Forest View Middle School. Samsung.com mm -hmm. solve slash uh, solve for tomorrow. Yep, Samsung.com slash solve for tomorrow. Correct. Yep, and we want we want that to happen. Yeah, okay. yeah. Vote, we do. Vote, yep. vote. Upgrades for the district. Yeah. Well, Guys and Grace, this is really exciting. There's so much more to ask, and, and we're, we're out of time. But we will keep covering this on Lakeland News. And uh, definitely uh, visit their website, uh, HAB, as in High Altitude Balloon, yep. hab.forestviewmultimedia.com. And uh, I'm sure we'll have a link to that on, uh, on our website, the Lakeland TV website, too. So. Um, Thank you for, for coming in. Thank you for the work you're doing. Thank here. you. This is, Thanks for having us. Thanks this for having terrific. us. We appreciate Thanks this. Thanks for the support. You know, that yeah. goes. We, we want our kids in 181, District 181, yeah. to be shined. That, this, is, this is them. It's our good kids to see. deserve this recognition. Good to see what you can do. Well, thank you for uh, watching Lakeland Currents here on Lakeland Public Television. Our guests have been Jim Reed, Corey Olson, and uh, Grace Pagel of the High Altitude Balloon Project at Forest View Medical, Middle School in Baxter. So thank you for watching Lakeland Currents here on Lakeland Public Television.